my family for an entire week using only this cookbook. Stick around to see what we think of it. This is a fair bit creamier than I was expecting. Ew! I really like it. It's not a fun job. It smells so good. Annie's writing down her review. She's taking it very seriously tonight. We're probably gonna have a taste. Mmm. Wait, don't they? This might be a disaster. Let's find out. I'm gonna make a mess here. This might be the coolest thing we've made in the Instant Pot. Like melt in your mouth. I like it. It's really bad. As soon as it hit my tongue, I fell in love. I feel like this is gonna be a winner. But I've been wrong before. So we all sorta kinda liked it a little bit, pretty much. Not bad. But my Instant Pot broke down. Uh, for the record, I've never done anything like this before. Greetings everyone and welcome to Plant Based with Jeremy. Here on the channel we do a variety of things of the plant-based and vegan variety. We do these cookbook reviews, I do my own recipes, and some other fun things that we get up to here on the channel. This week I am ridiculously excited to dive into the Vegan Instant Pot Cookbook by Nisha Vora. This is easily the most requested book I've had so far on the channel, so I'm really excited to look into it. It was hard for me to pick the recipes that I wanted to do because there's just so many that look awesome and so many that you recommended. And also I wanted to try to find things that I think my kids would like. For those that don't know, Nisha is like the goat of vegan plant-based YouTube with her channel Rainbow Plant Life. If you haven't come across it yet, I would be shocked. I will link to it down below. But I love her stuff. She's so inspiring. She's bright and warm and lovely. So I'm really, really pumped to dive into this. And you know, if any of you follow Nisha and wanna let her know we're over here doing this stuff, I'd love for her to see what we're up to as well because she's just awesome. I just kinda wanna be Nisha's friend. I'm not gonna lie. I think we could hang. If you're new to the channel and you missed my recent 10K subscriber celebration video, I was offering a discount code for this amazing digital scale DEXA scan thing called the Fit Track by a company called Hume Health. That discount code still applies. It's PB with J. The link is down below and you get a pretty sweet, awesome discount using that code. So check it out. I'd love to take this moment to say hello to some of our subscribers from around the world who have said hello in the comments down below. We've got Lainey from Rockford, Dale from Frankfurt, Tasha from Mississippi, and Christine from all the way over in Zimbabwe. Thank you so much for watching. I love so much getting comments from all of you about the videos, what you think of them, recommendations on your side, tips and tricks that help other people. So don't be shy. I legit respond to pretty much every single comment, unless you're mean, and then sometimes I don't. But sometimes I do, I usually do. And if you're new to the channel and you like this video, don't be shy about hitting that thumbs up and subscribe as well. On to the food. For breakfast this morning, we're gonna make a pumpkin spice oatmeal with coconut walnut crumble. So I'll make it for everyone who knows when the kids will wake up, but it'll be here for them. And I like this idea of the walnut crumble. The only thing I'm gonna change out is she calls for coconut oil in here, but I'm gonna switch that out. I'm not sure yet, either with applesauce or tahini. I want it to kind of stick together, have a little bit of the fatty quality that it's calling for. I'm excited for this one. So my first big oopsie is that I thought we had steel cut oats. So I'm just making it with rolled oats. The texture of the oats really. So we'll grade that on a curve. And the trick to a lot of these recipes is really listening to the instructions that she's got in the book about the pressure release and how long to let it sit. So as, long, as soon as it's done, you don't just turn it off. You gotta let it sit for a little bit longer and naturally release. So keep an eye out for those. I'm not gonna mention all of those in this video because you should get the book, but maybe I'll mention a few if I remember to. I'm excited for this. I love making oats in the Instant Pot because they almost always turn out perfectly. So the cooking time change with using these oats is gonna be just three minutes in the Instant Pot compared to the 12 minutes she's using for steel cut oats, which still seems like a lot, but She's, you know, she made the book and I trust her, but I do know rolled oats cook a lot faster. So three minutes is what my usual go-to time is for oatmeal. This is a fair bit creamier than I was expecting, but that might be because I've messed up the oat ratio, but that's okay. It'll just be 
a creamier oatmeal. We won't comment on texture, we'll just comment on flavor, which everything is the same. Speaking of which, I'm gonna try this crumble. Yes, that's something I normally wouldn't do for oatmeal, so I'm very excited about that. All right, let's plate this up. Oh, yes. Hi. Can you break this? It's good. I really like the topping on it. Like, with it, by itself, it's just okay. Put everything together? Put together, but now I've eaten all the topping, so now it's just okay. So you don't like the oatmeal itself? It's like a little bland or something. And he's going to try mine because she's already convinced she won't like it. Oh, she went back. No? No, not sweet enough. It just tastes like pumpkin. But you can, if you added more maple syrup, it's oatmeal. You could have more maple syrup. No, not the same. I could add some of Annie's date caramel that she made last night. And what's in that? Annie, what's in your date caramel? Dates, peanut butter, and water? Yeah. I'll be right back. Yeah, they're not wrong. Yeah, I want some dick caramel. It's got all the flavors. It's good, but... And I'm sure the book tells you you can add more maple syrup. Like, I'm usually just... I put a ton of fruit. Like, I put some bananas in there and cream it up. I'm just missing, like, a little sweet where... We're out of bananas. If I had bananas, I'd throw some bananas in there. I think this would be good. Stirring some dates. And throw a little dick caramel. I, know, I realize we're modifying the recipe. It's just okay. It's only okay is the problem. Oh, that's so much better. And he saved the day. This one, uh, sadly, I mean, the idea is great. I think it's definitely not a thing for kids. And I should love this because I love pum pumpkin. It's just missing something. Try it with the caramel. It's so much better. I know, but that's not... I'm reviewing the recipe, not our modifications. I'm sure it's going to taste better. Mmm. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, ten times better. So... <laughs> what was that? I don't know. Fire alarm? There's an elephant in our house. So if you want a pumpkin-y type of oatmeal, this is a good base, and then you might want to add to it. Tonight for dinner, we're going to make vegetable lasagna with basil ricotta. Uh, we make lasagna. We make a mean lasagna in this house, but I've never made one in the Instant Pot, so I am super fascinated. I had to get this special little guy. It's a seven inch springform pan, because this is probably the biggest size that'll fit inside the Instant Pot. It looks big here, it's not. It's like the size of my head. So like the instructions say, it only serves four. Uh, so no leftovers for this meal. If you're curious uh, about this, I will put a link down below to where you can get on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps out the channel as well. So, you know, consider that if you're looking to buy one of these for yourself. So it, it's similar to most lasagnas. So I'm gonna make a, uh, a basil ricotta using tofu, which if you've watched the channel, you've seen me make a tofu ricotta before. So when it comes to the tofu ricotta, one trick is that you could press the tofu before, but if you forgot to do that, like I did, you can just take some paper towels or we've got these reusable napkins that my wife has made and just blot it a little bit just to pull out some of the excess liquid. It'll just help with the texture. If you don't do it, it's not gonna kill you. It'll just be a little looser and runnier. Uh, the only thing I'm gonna be shifting for her recipe is just omitting the oil. Otherwise, I'm gonna be doing it pretty much as is. So yeah, so I'm gonna start off by making the basil ricotta in uh, my food processor. And then you make the vegetable filling inside the Instant Pot. And you give it a little wipe down afterwards. And then otherwise, you just build everything inside this springform pan. And then you cook it. And the noodles we're using are these Catelli brand, which are gluten-free. Uh, and they're no-bake as well. So it should bake inside of this. We've had luck with these ones. I really like them. So, so because we're doing this in the Instant Pot, what we need to do is we need to dilute the tomato sauce because it's going to help the noodles cook because they're not pre-cooked. So what she recommends is taking a cup and a half of tomato sauce and adding a half cup of water to it. I have vegan lasagna, vegan lasagna, vegan mozzarella I'm going to use, which is uh, Daya, which is the one that we tend to like these days. Let's see how this goes. I mean, we're a family that likes lasagna, so I can't imagine we're not gonna enjoy the flavors. I'm just more curious how the Instant Pot handles this. It looks interesting, like she's 
you know, because it's a weird circle shape, um, she's basically saying break up the noodles and just kind of build it like a mosaic <laughs> on top just to cover the space so don't overlap. Huzzah! Whoops. Sorry, I bumped it there. You probably didn't get a good view, but I put it in. It was tricky. Now we cook it for 20 minutes and we let the pressure naturally release, which I don't know how long this will take. I'll let you know. I'd say it took about 10 minutes to come up to pressure, maybe a little bit less. And it looks like it took 14 minutes to, uh, for the natural pressure to release. So it's about 45 minutes of cooking time-ish already. Uh, now we're gonna crank it open and see what happens. I'm, I'm nervous and scared and all the things. I feel like it's gonna slip. Um, ow. Oh wow, that looks pretty. I'm gonna make a mess here. Don't fall, don't fall, don't fall. Okay. Ah! Ooh. So now we're gonna top it with some diet cheese and we're gonna broil it. This might be the coolest thing we've made in the Instant Pot. Mm. It's really delicious. I give it two thumbs up. And it was made in an Instant Pot, which is super cool. I like it. It's got a lot of flavor. Very lemony, the ricotta, the tofu is very lemony. It's got a really nice flavor, nice textures. It looked really watery, but it doesn't taste watery. Annie, are you over there destroying it to get the mushrooms out? No, to get the cheese mixed up. Here's Annie goes, a deconstructed lasagna. Mmm. Annie's already excited. You ready to talk, Annie? Mm -hmm. No. It's really good lasagna. Yeah, what do you like about it? It just tastes like a normal lasagna. So this is a good one for kids? Yeah. Oh, wow, it like melts in your mouth. That's delicious. Yeah, that's up there with the best of the lasagna we've made at home ourselves. Uh, like a baby bird. I liked it. Tastes good. Flavors are really good. Was the, that yours, Mom? The vegan cheese doesn't taste too vegan cheesy. Delicious. Flavors are on point. I think this is best for somebody if you are either a couple or you live by yourself and you don't want to make a giant full lasagna because the amount of effort this takes is about the same as a regular lasagna. Um, <clears throat> so you just don't get the leftovers you would normally get, which makes all that extra work worth it. I would take this recipe and do it in a lasagna pan and double it. But it's perfect for people that are living on their own or just a couple that you want to have like one set of leftovers for. Tonight for dessert, we're gonna make Thai mango sticky rice. I'm really excited for this. I've cooked a lot of rice in my life, but I've never made a, a sticky rice dessert, really. I've made like a rice pudding. This seems a little bit different. I guess it's a very similar thing. What am I saying? But I like the method that, that she's using here. Uh, instead of cooking the rice directly in the instant pot, you cook it, you steam it. So that's gonna be interesting. So the trick to using uh, glutinous rice, which is sticky rice, it's all the same thing, is you gotta rinse it a lot because you do want it to get goopy and whatnot, but you don't want to get overly goopy. So you got to rinse it right out until it runs clear. So this takes a couple of steps. Uh, the first is cooking the rice in the Instant Pot. I forgot to shoot this, but I just added two thirds a cup of water to this rice. And now we're gonna put it in the Instant Pot for 13 minutes and then let it naturally release for 10. But then the rest is done outside of that. You do need some stove top here, so you have to cook some coconut milk on top of stove top where you mix in some sugar and salt and you whisk that around until it has like a nice little sweet and salty flavor. So I'm using coconut sugar here, which is probably gonna make it brown, but it'll be like a mocha sauce on top. So it won't be as pretty as the picture with just pure white. I guess the trick to that is you wanna keep that warm until you mix it in with the rice once it's cooked. 
So that's that's one of the tricks is you gotta have a little bit of time in advance to make this recipe because it's gotta cool and come down to room temperature before you serve it. So with the remaining coconut milk, you make a bit of a slurry out of it, and then you combine it with the rest of it, and then use that as a, as a drizzle once it's thickened. You pour that over top. And then you add the, uh, the mango and sprinkle with some seeds. I feel like this is gonna be a winner, but I've been wrong before. A cream sauce. Mmm, that's delicious. Very nice. Coconutty, fruity, not too sweet. I really like it. It smells so good. Can you try just the rice? Mmm. This isn't necessarily a rice pudding though, right? It's, it's sticky called rice. sticky rice. It's mango Thai sticky rice. Okay, so it's not like supposed to be pudding-y. Yeah. Mmm, yeah. it's good. It has a good texture. And to sweetness, really good flavor. It would be a really nice dessert if we had people over for dinner. I'm only gonna have a taste. I'm oh, trying nice. not to eat so much sugar, but I eat the whole thing. I just, I have to keep trying it because I don't know how to think. It's just, I don't really like it. I'll have it. Ephraim is gonna have the second portion. <laughs> so this is, I think this is a two thumbs, a four thumbs up from Ephraim. I knew within a split second it was delicious. Wow. It's the simplest recipe. Like all this is, is sticky rice, coconut cream, and coconut sugar, and salt. Really simple, delicious. And you know what was cool about this recipe? She had me cook the rice in the Instant Pot, but not inside the basin. I steamed it mm. inside of a, a bigger cup. Really simple, delicious. And he wanted to make a mug cake anyway. This is all a scam. She liked the dessert, but not as much as she wanted a mug cake. <laughs> Yeah, this is uh, a solid three out of four for our family, but I think on another day, Annie might change her mind. So ironically, in the middle of making this video, my Instant Pot broke down. I think I burnt the fuse out, but I'm not sure. Luckily, I have a backup meat R2 Instant Pot. Beep, 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 beep. Worst case, we use that. But you know what? I, I ordered a soldering kit and a replacement fuse. So I'm gonna see if I can't fix it. Uh, for the record, I've never done anything like this before. I don't actually know what I'm doing. And now's the moment of truth. We're gonna plug this in. Ah! I'm a genius! I fixed it! I've never been more proud of myself in my entire life. I don't, oh wow. Um, so I will put a link in the description down below to the YouTube video that I used to do this. Um, I'm slightly worried that now I'm going to burn the house down with this, but holy cow. I can't believe that worked. Wow. The things you can learn on YouTube, huh? All right. So with the newly fixed instant pot, I'm going to make the best corn chowder. So this is fun. I actually have some fresh corn, so I'm going to cut that up as it suggests to do so. So there's a bit of prep involved in this, but it cooks pretty quick in theory. It takes six minutes in the Instant Pot, but it takes time to come up and go down. All right, I gotta husk and cut some corn and some potatoes. I already um, soaked a cup of raw cashews, so that's been going pretty much all day. So it looks simple enough. You saute the onions for a little bit, then you add the garlic and the jalapenos, carrot and celery, and then the potatoes. And everything else, it seems like. Uh, and then at the end, you blitz it all together once it's cooked. I forgot to add the spices. They're there now. Annie just asked us, Annie just asked us if we have corn. And I said, not only are we having corn, we have corn soup. And she's upset. You can't even eat on the cob anyway, you I can know, it. but I just want corn. You're having corn. And a soup. I, I, 
I'm gonna bite my tongue. I'm biting it. Do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, comment below some of the parenting nonsense you have to deal with. We'll share stories. Ew. I mean, ew. I got a puree and stuff. Give it a second, man. All the flavors have to come together in the blending. It's the kind of soup that takes like a second for the flavors to build. I really like it. That's not the soup. I didn't make that. I'm hungry. Eat the soup. It's hot. Take from the edge. My grandma always said. Yeah, I like it. Creamy, good flavors, a little bit of spice. Yeah. It, it takes a second. They build that, the flavors. Mm -hmm. Is it the best corn chowder? Because that's what it's called. I don't know if I've eaten much corn chowder. So yeah, it's the best. Best I've ever had. It doesn't taste like corn. Does it taste like corn? Cornish. Weird. It's weird? What would you do to make it better? Add way more corn. I think it's got a nice little spicy kick to it. I like it. Or, oh, it smells like... Corn. Wait, what is it? Corn! No, it's, it's, it's corn. it reminds, reminds me of something. A big lob with knobs. It hugs it too. A big lob with knobs? <laughs> no. A big lump with <laughs> I don't know what it reminds me of. It tastes like ginger lemon popsicles. It tastes like ginger yeah. lemon popsicles? Do you like it though? Make some corn popsicles. That's okay. Yeah. Not my favorite. So this was like in the middle for a family, I'd say. It's fun. Oh, I would yeah. eat it again. Yeah. yeah. But I wouldn't like beg you to make it. I would like it with other things for the meal. Like if this was like a starter. Yeah, it should with... be. I don't think it should be a... No. Yeah, well, maybe it's not supposed to be main. I just did it as a main because, yeah, here we go. But yeah, so it's it's good. I liked it a lot, and the kids were meh on it. I got a corn here. There's corn here center because I use fresh corn. For dinner tonight, I'm going to make this basic but oh-so-delicious Indian doll. So, uh, I've got pretty much all the ingredients we need here. I'm going to avoid using the coconut oil just because I don't like using oil in my cooking, as you know. And uh, spice-wise, I couldn't find serrano peppers, no matter where I looked. So it's just gonna be jalapenos, unfortunately, but it'll still give some kick to it. And shallots, I, I don't have any shallots, but I'm gonna use a small red onion and hopefully it does something similar to what we need for this. Starting off by cooking some rice in the instant pot uh, while I get everything ready and that shouldn't take long. But lentils have to soak before, so I'm gonna do that first. But this is essentially going to be uh, sauteing the onions and then the garlic, ginger, and the peppers, and then adding the spices to get all those things nice and coated, and then putting the rest of it in and letting it cook. And then while that's going, um, we have to make something called tadka. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Let me know if I'm not which is uh, kind of like a, a spiced caramelized kind of onion where we take the, uh, the, the thinly sliced red onion that I'm using, shallots in her recipe, and we're gonna combine that with some spices uh, and some lime. And, uh, and that'll go, that'll mix inside of it. So the trick to the tadka is for the cumin seeds and the mustard seeds, it's just to put them in long enough so they start to pop a little bit, like 30 to 60 seconds roughly. So uh, for the doll, we just have to wait until it cooks and then we're supposed to let it naturally release for 10 minutes, then we can release it. And that's it. So this, like, look how thick it is in the book. It doesn't say to let it sit. No. It'll thicken. It, it will. will. And... It doesn't say it needs to thicken for a while, but it's like super thick in that photo. Nisha, I hate to say it, but based on how I cooked it, using your instructions, that photo's a lie. A little bit. All right, well, whoever gets the other bay leaf wins a prize. Ooh, I like prizes. The only thing I don't love about this is it doesn't have like a huge vegetable portion. So if I have some frozen peas, I feel like I might just cook up some frozen peas for the side. Let's see what we think. I think it may be just like some salt and pepper. All right, come get know. it. How is the basic, ba basic, 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 but oh so delicious doll? Pretty basic. <laughs> um, I added some salt and pepper. I'm not blown away, but it's tasty. It was pretty quick to make. Oh yeah? Was it pretty quick for you to make from the other room? Yeah, I made it so fast. 
I'm just sat there. Yeah, I guess that was pretty quick for you. I like it, but I think we've had more flavorful curries. The salt and pepper helps a little bit. Oh, you know, it's building though. The flavor, I think it's maybe yeah. it needs to sit for a little bit too. It'd be interesting to see what it tastes like tomorrow. Sometimes curry just needs to sit. All right, let's see what the kids think. Annie? It's really bad. You should have mine. All I can taste is the rice. Oh, well maybe that's because Annie mixed it all together. That's all it tastes like. Just rice and like a little bit of wine. So meh. Bleh. Not a winner here. I didn't hate it, but I wouldn't make it again. We just woke up and I'm gonna make the butternut squash buckwheat porridge bowl. I'm gonna make a half serving of this, so it serves two because my kids looked at this yesterday and they already said no. There's zero chance for them trying this out. But she says that if Thanksgiving were a breakfast and came in a bowl form, this would be it. So I'm curious. I've got to shred up some butternut squash. Nice peeling, Willie. It's not a fun job. No? Nope. Thanks for doing it though. And uh, rinse some buckwheat. Whenever you use buckwheat, you gotta rinse it because it's slimy and gross. Uh, and you gotta get that stuff off. Otherwise it's gonna be in the food and you don't want that. I'm worried this is gonna burn <laughs> in some pot, but this is the amount you say. There's no it's not it doesn't say add any actual water. And then we just cook it in some pot for five minutes, and you naturally release. Anyway, give her a go. I'm gonna go for a walk while this is cooking. If the dog is willing to walk this morning, he's getting grumpy in his old age. And you're gonna try it? It smells disgusting. What does it smell like? Oh, let me see what it smells like. Splash and band aids. Mmm. Surprisingly, it tastes really good. It's not terrible. <laughs> what? He said it's not terrible. Do you like it? She loves but it. She's opening her mouth for more. <laughs> Tastes like, does it taste like Thanksgiving in a bowl? A little salt, sweet and salty. A little bit of a lumpy texture. So if you don't like smooth, this probably isn't the the um, porridge for you because it's the buckwheat groats are very lumpy. chunky. They make lumps. But if you like chewy lumps, this is the one for you. It's actually quite good. I'm shocked. <laughs> yeah. And taste a second. I can see why you don't like it. I can taste like the Thanksgiving idea. Squash gives it like the, you know, squash, sweet potato, all those kind of things. Earthy. You could adjust the seasonings too if you wanted to make it more cinnamon. And here's this nutmeg. This is, I, I like this way more than I thought I was going to. I thought I would just have to like gum it down. Where are your teeth? Oh. Why I don't are you gumming even, it down? I don't eat with my teeth. <laughs> I gum everything. So we liked it, and Annie didn't really give it a shot. No, I did. I, I took a taste. This was, what Annie, this was Annie's taste. She had this much. That, no, I had less. You had less than that? Yeah. Like, I had less what's on the, the, the like, front. That's not a taste, kid. Yes, I tasted it, and it tasted disgusting. If you taste the flavor, then it is a taste. Like, I taste the flavor. What do you think below? Let us know below if you think that eating that much qualifies a taste or not. 100% does. Let us know, Team Annie or Team Jeremy. Team Annie. Tonight for dinner, we're making West African peanut stew. So mostly you, you and your water. Well, I gotta clean the thing. You gotta clean, but it makes it hard for the people to hear. Life goes on, man. You gotta just stop because you're making a video. What? <laughs> okay. So you you cook up the onion and the garlic and the ginger first in the instant pot, and then you throw everything else in. And this seems, except for the greens and your cilantro and stuff you put on top. Um, most of it goes in. And then you, it says you cook it only for like five minutes, but it'll take a while to come up to temperature. So that don't get, if you're new to the Instant Pot, don't get uh, screwed up by that five minute thing because it's not really that helpful. Probably takes about 10 minutes for it to come up to temperature 
if not longer. So take that. And at the end, you throw in your greens. Uh, we're using spinach. No, kale. We got kale, right? We had so much kale. We had the from biggest. The, from the Kitchener Market. We had the biggest head Best of kale. Best market, right? Kitchener Market. Love it. If you live Prop in. to the Kitchener Market. Woo -woo. If you live in southwestern Ontario, Kitchener Market's where it's at. Uh, okay, and then we're gonna. We got some cilantro too from there, so we're gonna add that on top. So I'm an idiot, and I didn't put in the. Uh, the chickpeas. Are you snorting at me? Okay. Is that there a reason for that? Okay. So I'm gonna put them in now, even though the soup's already cooked. They're just gonna be a bit firmer than they probably should be. But that might be a nice thing in this soup. They might have soaked up the flavor a bit more. Everyone does the sink when I'm talking. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna put this out. People can top it with some more lemon. We'll spritz more lemon if they want. Some cilantro and uh, some roasted peanuts. Let's see what everyone thinks. Pretty good. Yeah? What do you like? I like the flavor, it's kind of salty. Texture's good. Yeah. You, don't, you don't need rice on this. No? Maybe if you're like, not completely vegan, maybe some yogurt. Wait, are you put vegan yogurt in? Yeah. It's so good. I will definitely ask you to make this again. Mm. And I really wish I could take it from the school, but we haven't known that policy in school. Oh, instantly. As soon as it hit my tongue, I fell in love. Oh my goodness. This is crazy good. This makes up for the doll recipe that was lacking flavor. Mm -hmm. Now to Annie. Annie's writing down her review. She's taking it very seriously tonight. Hey, Auntie. Creamy, mm -hmm. good with the sweet potato. Needs raisins. Not that many raisins. It's not quite the same as when down, down, they cook them because they get so soft and. I shouldn't have put rice in here. It adds sweet. The raisins add sweet. Okay, we're done now. So we all liked it. In fact, it's, I'm putting this probably in in my cook my recipe book. It's it's, it's good. It's a goodie. Add raisins. I'm making this breakfast enchilada casserole for dinner. That's how we usually eat the savory breakfast meals in a lot of these books. So I've actually already been making it because we got to rush out the door today. Um, and I think I'm, it's going to be enough time. It's not dissimilar to the lasagna we made the other day, where it's kind of like an enchilada lasagna. Hey, Woody. Hi, Hi, I think dinner's gonna be ready on time. It's gonna be tight. Uh, yeah, so now we're just in clean up mode. But it's not that hard, uh, especially if you already have enchilada sauce or if you got some from the store, which I didn't. So I had to make some from scratch, which I'm not gonna show. Sorry. You can buy it at the store or you can Google how to make some online. I just didn't have time to shoot it all tonight. And then uh, it's just layering corn tortillas with enchilada sauce, um, this vegetable mixture that I pre-cooked inside the Instant Pot, some corn and some um, jalapeno peppers. And then you, you, it, you know, the beautiful picture here shows them putting a queso on, but I didn't have that, so I just used some cheddar diet cheese. And now we're just hoping this will be ready in time for us to eat before we have to go. Um, the vegan cheese has a weird slimy texture that okay. adds a flavor, but it literally tastes like a taco that was put into a bowl with zucchini. In a good way? Yes, except for the zucchini. So you you kind of like it, but not... Except for the zucchini. Under, so you don't like the zucchini? I'm just trying to be clear. I don't like zucchini. Okay, zucchini. Okay. Easy? Yeah? Uh-huh. Do you echo the cheese? Yeah, it's slimy. It's slimy? Has it taste otherwise? Okay, okay. A bit oily. It's good. I think I would like it with our own cheese that we make. Yeah. And that'd be better. But the flavors are great. This is good. I just, for me, it felt like it took a really long time to make this in the Instant Pot. It felt like a recipe that was like shoehorned into an Instant Pot. Like if you lived in an apartment and didn't have an oven and you only had an Instant Pot, this is great. Otherwise, it felt like a 
kind of a pain to make this in the Instant Pot. And you it didn't- You can make it in the oven. Well, you can make double the amount and have leftovers. So we all sort of kind of liked it a little bit, pretty much. Not bad. Good job. Hey, so for dinner, I'm gonna make this chickpea biryani stew. Chickpea vegetable biryani. Am I saying biryani right? You'll correct me if I'm not. I also have to make something called a raita? R-A-I-T-A. Right? Raita? Raita? Th there's a lot of ingredients in this one. Uh, you, when you think of Instant Pot, you think this is gonna be a quick, easy meal. Not always with this cookbook. Not always. To start off, we have to soak the rice for 30 minutes and then let it dry for 15 minutes. So add that 45 minutes to your cooking time. And then you make this raita. Raita? Maybe that's it. Which uh, seems like it's a side dressing that you put on the side. So one thing to note uh, of this recipe is that you need a lot of spices for it. So you need a fully stocked cupboard and ideally you have the whole version of some of them. Like this calls for cinnamon sticks and bay leaves, but like those are common things. It also calls for fennel seeds, cumin seeds, cardamom pods. So you can also use the spice version of that, but just know that to get the full benefit of the flavors of this recipe, I'm assuming you need all of these things. It's also kind of a game you play with this recipe. Oh, it's also cloves, which, I mean, if you've ever bitten to a clove, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's not. What is happening? So I got a little heat warning on the Instant Pot, C5, which just means that it's overheated. I don't think it has anything to do with my electrical <laughs> fix that I did the other day. Uh, luckily, we had the other one that we were loaning from my mother-in-law. So uh, I just swapped them out, and I hope it's fine. But you're very lucky, so be careful. Uh, that warning comes on apparently when there's not enough water in the pot and it feels like it's overheating or burning things, which is kind of what this recipe is supposed to do. So, uh, my fault for not putting water in in place of the oil right away, but I think it's gonna be fine. It says one cup mixed frozen vegetables. They like cauliflower and carrots. I think I'm using fresh. I'm sure that's fine. And then you can throw some mix-ins on. Uh, suggestions include cashews, fried cashews. I'm gonna put them in the air fryer. So they'll, they'll roast in there, that way I don't have to add the oil. And then some cilantro and mint leaves and uh, raisins, got all that beauty, okay. Just to note that the cashews are a mix-in item, but I didn't include them because I wanna keep this nut free so my wife can take it to work. But we will add them on top tonight for our dinner. It should be noted though, obviously I'm gonna swap out the uh, white basmati rice for brown rice because health. There's mint in there. I don't like it though. Okay, right, that's fine. It's okay, not the best though. It's just basic. Ba it's basic. I would not call this recipe basic. There's like every spice in the world is in this dish. Yeah, but it doesn't work. They don't work together like with every spice in the world. Like they just like cancel each other out, so it just ends up tasting like bland. Like there's, I can taste spice, but bland. Like, I kind of know what Ephraim means so bland. Like there's a, it's kind of weird because I could taste the spices, but yeah. it's like almost maybe not enough of them. Although this white, if you didn't take the white sauce, it's really good. It adds a nice. If you mix it in. Yeah. When you get some, when you get some, and mix it in. See what no. Are you scared? Are you scared of the white sauce? Yeah. I like the flavor of it. All right, Annie, go get your dinner. I want my dinner. It has raisins in it. Don't judge a book. Because it has raisins doesn't mean it's good. To be fair, if I was a kid, I probably would have not wanted to try this either. The yogurt itself would have thrown me off. So my kids are heroes for even trying it. I thought it was bland. I mean, my opinion is that this is a far from bland dish. It's just packed with flavors. That said, I like it. I don't know if I'd make it again. It's a lot. I can see this not being a kid's favorite kind of meal. Annie's confessional on why she didn't like the dinner. Um, well, the first reason is because the, the flavors weren't that good and it had a, it had a really strong flavor of this one, one thing that I didn't like. Oh, you might have been into a clove. 
And also, I had something like that for lunch because mom ordered that for hot lunch for me and I didn't like it either. Oh. I was set up to fail today and I didn't know it. So what are we making now? Sushi rice. Not french fries. See? Annie will eat other carbs. But do put on my sweet potato fries. We don't have any sweet potatoes. That's why you should always have one sweet potato with you at all times. That and a pickle jar. Comment below if you know what I'm talking about by the pickle jar. For dessert tonight, I'm making cookies and cream cheesecake. The recipe calls for cream filled sandwich cookies. I think we all know what that means. I don't know if this is the same case for everywhere in the world, but here in Canada, we have gluten free Oreos, which means I can make this for my wife. And I've had these before. They're pretty close to the same as the OG Oreo. Like honestly, start making Oreos gluten free. You'll sell more. That's just math. A couple of things to keep in mind for this recipe is it asks for you to do some advanced prep. You've got to put your coconut cream, <laughs> your can of coconut cream, that makes more sense, into the fridge. It says up to 24 hours before because you want it to get solid and to separate from the, it's not water, but you know, you want it to separate so the milk fat is all together. It also says you're supposed to soak cashews for eight hours in advance. You don't have to. If you just boil some water and pour it over some raw cashews, it'll do the same job as you're getting everything else ready to go. This recipe calls for a bunch of oil and I'm not gonna use any of it and I honestly don't know why she's included it here. I've made an Oreo crust before and the cream inside of the cookie is more than enough to make it all stick together. You don't need to add oil. It's silly. That's all you need to do. Look how well it sticks together. Uh, you know what? It's not quite sticking together as well as I would. Oh, you know what? I'm not gonna use oil. I'm gonna use aquafaba. Good old chickpea juice. See? That's all you needed. She recommends putting some parchment paper at the bottom of your springform pan. So I've cut out a little piece to fit inside there. And then after that, you're gonna add those soaked cashews as well as the cream from the coconut cream into the food processor that you've cleaned. This didn't solidify in the fridge. This can has been sitting in the fridge for two freaking days. I'm gonna go for it because I got everything else. This might be a disaster. Let's find out. And then you're gonna, it says you're gonna add coconut oil. I'm gonna use aquafaba as well as all the other ingredients here. The texture's not gonna be what it's supposed to be because the cream didn't quite set all the way. Uh-oh, Jeremy. This is what happens when you're a home cook. You gotta make stuff work. Maybe one more blitz. Oh okay, yeah, that's good. Two more tablespoons of my aquafaba instead of oil. We're gonna wrap it in foil and basically steam it for, it looks like 35 minutes. Let it come to room temperature and then keep it in the fridge for at least four hours. So I'm making this in the morning and leaving it, leaving it all day to sit. I'm so curious how this is gonna turn out. My miniature cheesecake slice. It's, it's very small, but it could be very rich. Okay, here we go. Tastes like cashews. This crust at the bottom is chewy and then it's sort of grainy and weird. It's like sweet and it, you taste the cashew. I don't like that. You don't like it? Well, I like the bottom stuff. And he doesn't love it. I mean, it looks good. It's very pretty, especially in, I love that in a dessert when it's like, you see the Oreo pieces inside. It's pretty good. It can be smoother. It smells like leaves and cream. Well, it's the first time we've had a, a vegan cheesecake, I think, that isn't like frozen. I think for a cheesecake, it should be a little bit sweeter. Yeah? It's not sweet enough. It's not sweet enough for me. But the texture's pretty good. Yeah. But like this part should be sweeter. Like it just tastes like, kind of like, uh, 
Oh, it's like tastes like something we had the other night. Like, Mango sticky rice. Yeah. Same. This is same. Like the cream. This is from that book too. Wow, she likes reusing stuff. But like, this should be sweeter. You would just add more sugar. But otherwise, it's good. Yeah. I don't think it needs to be sweeter. Sweet I enough for me. So for kids, sweeter. Adults, probably okay as is. I'd want to make it one more time and try to get that coconut cream. You um, just buy coconut cream, you know? I know, I should just do that. Three or four of us like this enough. It's okay. Should be sweeter. Should be sweeter. But, uh, you know, not bad for an entire week of just eating from the Instant Pot. <laughs> so what did we think about this book? I'm gonna be honest. The way she writes her, her instructions, I found a little intimidating for some of it. There just seems like a lot where some of the steps are more grouped together. I just felt like I had to reread the recipe a few times to really understand what I had to do. Uh, and I didn't love that aspect of it. That said, the meals themselves, I found generally delicious. And for the most part, our kids liked almost everything, not quite. So with that in mind, I think some of these recipes are more geared towards an adult palate. Also, you know, for things like the lasagna and other dishes, you know, the Instant Pot is somewhat limiting in how much you can make. So this might be better for couples or single people who are looking for a cookbook and wanted to use something like the Instant Pot. I would also say don't, you know, assume because it's an Instant Pot book that it means everything's going to be quick and fast. A lot of these recipes took multiple steps and were a bit time consuming. So for those reasons, I'm gonna say this book, if you're a foodie and you really wanna play around the kitchen, then I would say maybe you wanna buy it because there's a lot of great stuff in here. But my proper recommendation is it's a solid borrow. Get it from your library. It's a very popular book. I can't imagine you wouldn't be able to find it somewhere. And just try a couple of the recipes and see how you like them before you commit to actually buying it. And if you do want to buy it, use the link down below because it helps me and the channel out. Thanks again for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, let us know down in the comments below and let us know where you are watching from. And if you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. Speaking of which, YouTube really wants you to watch this video next because they said so and they're kind of the boss. But also, it's just good for us if you watch that video next because of algorithms and stuff. But if you don't care about that, that's fine too. I still love you.